Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 7, Lesson 3, The Pythagorean Theorem. After this lesson, you need to be able to find the measures of the sides of a right triangle using the Pythagorean Theorem and square roots. Let's learn. A right triangle is a triangle with- Hey, get out of here! Sorry about that. Not sure how we got in here. Anyway, let's learn. Right triangles. A right triangle is a triangle with one right angle. The legs are the sides that form the right angle. The hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle. It is the longest side of the triangle. So here we have a right triangle. We can see that there's a box in the corner indicating that it's a right triangle. The parts that make the right triangle, those are your legs. And opposite the right angle is your hypotenuse. It's going to be important for you to note if you are talking about legs or hypotenuse, as when we're dealing with the Pythagorean theorem, referencing those things helps you keep track of what you are doing. Let's learn the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem describes the relationship between the lengths of the legs and the length of the hypotenuse for any right triangle. How it works in a right triangle. So the key here is it has to be a right triangle, having that right angle. The sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. Now, that is a lot, and it doesn't really necessarily make sense written in words. It's more helpful to see what it would look like. I'm not going to be able to draw it here, but essentially, if you were to make a square on the leg, so this would be A tall and A wide, the area would be a squared. This is an a squared. If you add that to the same thing down here with a b squared, adding those two squares together gives you the same area as this c squared on the c side. Now, when you're doing it, you're trying to find the side lengths, not actually these squares that are on the side. So in order to go back to the side, you end up doing the square root. But the Pythagorean theorem says that this square on the leg side plus the other square on the leg side is equal to the square on the hypotenuse side. In short, and so we don't have to write it out with a picture every time, we can say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is your Pythagorean theorem, where a and b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse. Here we can see how to find the missing lengths in the right triangle shown, and we'll use these steps. So if I'm trying to figure out my missing hypotenuse length, given the fact that my legs are 20 and 21, I can use the Pythagorean theorem since this is a right triangle. So leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. If I plug in the numbers, 21 squared is 441, 20 squared is 400, Next, I'm going to add those two together, and I get 841. 841 is equal to the square that's on the hypotenuse side. So to figure out that length, we're going to need to take the square root. So the square root of 841 is 29, meaning this side here would be 29. We learned in a previous module that taking the square root gives you a positive and a negative version of the same number, so plus or minus 29. But since we're talking about length, length can't be negative, so we would just kind of ignore the negative solution. This triangle has a hypotenuse length of positive 29 centimeters. Example 1. Find the hypotenuse. A ladder is leaning against the building as shown in the figure. What is the length of the ladder? First, we know the lengths of the legs. So we can see leg here leg here, here's our right angle, we're trying to find our hypotenuse. So let's say that A is 12, so 12 squared, and B is 16, so 16 squared. I'm making a square off each side to figure it out. So 12 squared is 144, so let's say that this square is 144, 16 squared is 256. If I add those together, then this square that's off the hypotenuse is equal to 400. 
what side lengths could give me an area for a square of 400. To figure that out, square root it. So square root of 400 is 20. And again, we don't need the plus or minus. We don't need the negative distance. So the length of the side must be positive. The ladder here was 20 feet long. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and use the picture to help find the length of x. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that x was 17. If I do 8 squared, which is my square off the bottom here, I get 64 plus 15 squared, so the square off that side, that's 225. Added together, I would get x squared. These two together is 289. Last, I'm going to take the square root to get back to my side length. So the square root of 289 is 17, and I only need the positive answer. So 17 was x, and our unit was feet. Example two, find the hypotenuse in three dimensions. A 12 foot flagpole is placed in the center of a square area. To stabilize the pole, a wire will stretch from the top of the pole to each corner of the square. The flagpole is seven feet from each corner of the square. What is the length of each wire round to the nearest tenth? So in the picture here, the legs are represented by line segments A, B, so along the bottom here, and a, C, which is the height of the flagpole. The hypotenuse is our support wire from B to C. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to find our support wires. So first, A, B is 7. A, C, our other leg, our height here was 12. If we square those, 7 squared is 49, 12 squared is 144. We're going to add those together and we get 193. So our square off our hypotenuse was 193. To find that side length, we take the square root. The square root of 193 is not a perfect square, so we're going to need to use a calculator. It comes out to about 13.9. And since we round it off, we're going to use our little squiggle equal sign. Again, that means approximately equal to. So the length of the wire is about 13.9 feet. And again, we do not want our negative distance. So we only use positive 13.9. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and use the picture to solve for x. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found 42.2 feet. Let's see how we get that. So we're trying to find our hypotenuse. So I want my leg squared, 25 squared plus other leg squared. That together will equal my hypotenuse squared. 25 squared is 625. 34 squared is 1,156. Add that together, we get 1,781. And then finally, I'm just going to square root that to figure out x. I end up with x is equal to 42.201 and so on. Rounding to the nearest tenth, 42.2. And since the square root is rather large, and I'm not sure if it's perfect or not, I just used a calculator. It was not perfect, 42.2. Example three, find missing leg lengths. So in our previous examples, we've been finding a missing hypotenuse where we add the two square legs together to get the square of the hypotenuse. This time we gotta find the leg, so we're kind of working backwards. A plane takes off from an airport and travels 13 miles on its path. If the plane is 12 miles from its takeoff point horizontally, what is its height? So the distance between the plane's location and takeoff point is the hypotenuse. They went 13 miles on the path. And it says horizontally, it is 12 miles away from where it started. We want to know the height, which in this case is one of the legs. 
So in order to find the legs, instead of adding, we're going to end up subtracting. But we'll see how to get there. So we still start with our a squared plus b squared equals c squared, our Pythagorean theorem. We know that one of the legs is 12. Our other leg, we're not sure, that is x. Our hypotenuse this time was 13. So just like before, we're going to square them, 144 and 169. Here, instead of adding the two things together to find our missing hypotenuse, we're going to end up needing to subtract it to figure out what's missing. So 169 minus 144 is 25. Now I'm back to what I was doing. Take the square root. So the square root of 25 is 5. And as with all the examples and checks, the length cannot be negative. So this would just be a height of 5 miles. So x was equal to 5. And we could double check to make sure that we have the correct thing. If we were to go back through and do our Pythagorean theorem forward, 5 squared is 25 plus 12 squared, 144. Do I get 169, which is 13 squared? Yes, I can check. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and use the picture to determine the height of the kite. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that it's 35.7 feet above the ground. To get that 35 squared plus whatever the height squared is, this I'm going to use h this time, is equal to 50 squared. Using my calculator, 35 squared is 1225 plus whatever the height squared was is equal to 50 squared, which is 2500. Subtract subtract, I get h squared is 1275, and then I take the square root, and I get h is about 35.707, so rounding to the nearest tenth, 35.7. Example 4. Find missing leg lengths in three dimensions. Gravel used for construction purposes is piled in the approximate shape of a cone. The distance from the top of the cone to the edge is about 17 feet, and the height is about 8 feet. So here's top to the edge and height. What is the approximate radius of the cone? Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So our Pythagorean theorem, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Plug in what we know. So we know the leg, we know a hypotenuse, we're missing our radius, our bottom leg. Let's square them out. A squared is 64, 17 squared is 289. Subtract 64 from both sides. So B squared is around 225. Take the square root of 225. B is about 15. And again, length can't be negative, so it is about 15 feet. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and use the picture to figure out the height of the roof. Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. You should have said the roof height was 21.8 feet. Here we have a leg on the bottom, so 45, and that will have to be squared, plus our other leg, which was our height for x squared, equals our diagonal hypotenuse here, 50 squared. 50 squared is 2,500. 45 squared, I'm not sure, so using my calculator, I find that it's 2,025. I'm going to subtract, and I find that x squared equals 475. And if I square root both sides, x is equal to 21.794, rounded to the nearest tenth, 79 would round to 8, so 21.8. Let's learn geometric proofs. A proof is a logical argument where each statement is justified by a reason. Proofs are used in geometry to explain or prove why 
something is true about a geometric figure. For the Pythagorean theorem, there are tons of proofs. Now, I'm not going to go through any of them here, but I recommend that you search Pythagorean theorem proofs on YouTube or on the internet and find some videos that show you visually how we can prove the Pythagorean theorem and not that we just know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Some of them are pretty interesting. And it makes me wonder what some of the people were doing in order to discover that proof in the first place. Go check them out.